the JLR interview series. Okay, so it's Monday morning, 8th of October, um, just after 10 a.m., and uh, which is just after 11 a.m. Central European time, because uh, today I have another Skype interview with an Italian drummer. Her name is Cecilia Sanchietti. So, how are you this morning, Cecilia? Hello, good morning, I'm fine, you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Um, I've been featuring Cecilia's music in the last few months on the uh, latest releases slot. Um, some really good music, so I thought actually it would be a nice idea to get Cecilia onto the station and to ask us a few questions about her music. So that's why we're here today. So really, the first question I want to ask you, so you released a, a CD um, shall we say the back end at the end of 2017 and it was called La Terza Via that's correct isn't it? yeah okay and I got the pronunciation right yes. <laughs> okay so um, how does that pronounce into English is that something like the third journey or what is that how does it okay. translate yeah the translation is uh, in Italian uh, in English is uh, the third way. The third way, okay. Yeah, but it has a really poetical significance uh, because the uh, the focus, uh, the main important thing of the album is the theme of the courage. Okay. The courage uh, oh. on different points of view and uh, uh, the courage, for example, the courage of truth, of quality, the courage to build your way. And mm. uh, La Terza Via, or the third way, is this a really nice but difficult way that you have to build uh, to try to realize yourself and uh, this is m difficult also because uh, it's the way of the musician and uh, so it's the courage to be a musician today to be a female musician a drummer mm. and a composer in jazz so it's a hard way but really nice okay that's good that's very interesting actually so I mean, is this your um, is this your first CD? Or have you released CDs before, or no? This is my second CD. Mm -hmm. The first CD was uh, in uh, 2015. The name was uh, Circle Time, and it was released by Alpha Music. Uh, that it's uh, an Italian label. Uh, the first album was more focused on uh, jazz ethnic sounds. So it's a little bit different from this one, the second one that is more, uh, how to say, more modern jazz, uh, even it's uh, HCM, HCM sounds, this kind of Ah, stuff. HCM sounds. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so, and uh, with, the, with your second CD, I mean, uh, you, did you write most of the tunes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've written a lot of the compositions mm. uh, because I'm a composer too, and I know it's so strange for a drummer. No, no, but, not at all, uh, not at all. Um, yeah. There's many, many of my favorite drummers um, are great composers. Uh, yeah. One of them being Jack Dijonet, who I think is one of the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. So for me, it's and um, Billy Cobham. For me, it's quite normal to hear about. I suppose for other people. They look at drummers and they all think of something else. So yeah, I understand what you mean. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's okay because usually uh, the imagination of the drummers it's really like uh, that. Uh, a musician they play drums and stop. They don't mm. care about music, but the reality is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, um, that's interesting to hear as well because I mean the compositions are really, really interesting. Um, the title of the tracks I quite like. For instance, "Run, Baby, Run." Mm -hmm. So maybe that will explain like your your re your thinking behind the, the project as well. Yeah, uh, about Ram Babylon? Yes, the the Ram name Ram of the song. Ram. Yeah, the yeah. title. Um, Ram Babylon is a composition uh, dedicated to the energy, dedicated to the energy that oh. move a lot of things and permit us to play, to compose, and to invent. And it's dedicated to an imagine that uh, I have on myself when I was child. Mm -hmm. Because when I was child, I had a really great energy. And sometimes I went out from my home and uh, I ran a lot, a lot, a lot without saying to my mother, okay, I go out. And so I went out and run, run, run because I, I was looking for something, but I didn't know what. 
I, I, I felt that uh, I wanted to go out uh, and because I felt a really great energy inside mm -hmm. and I knew that I wanted to do something with this energy but uh, at that stage I didn't know what so uh, I, I have this image in, in my mind that it's around baby Yang. it's the, the symbol of the energy that we have and permit us to, to love music and to do music Wow, that's 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 good. So really, I mean, um, before I get on to the next question, which part of Italy are you based? Roma, Roma. I come from Roma. Okay, you come from Rome. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, it, it, what you said leads on nicely to what I should ask next. Is um, how did you get into music and drumming? Uh, I started to play drums uh, when I was a teenager. Uh, before I have played piano. But suddenly I stopped to play piano, I, I started to play drums and uh, I remember that uh, my family was not so happy that <laughs> I, I was going to play drums but uh, I loved so much my friends because uh, they believed in my passion and uh, gave me a present when I was uh, I think 18 years old mm -hmm. and uh, wow, really? they gave me a drums. Uh, not really professional drums, but for me it was so nice. And so, thanks to my friend, I I started to play drums. I remember that I liked so much, uh, you know, Tullio De Piscopo is uh, an Italian drummer, mm -hmm. and uh, he's not only jazz. Uh, he plays also rock, funk, but I liked so much. And uh, when I was a really child. Uh, when he was in TV, I really got crazy for him, <laughs> and also I have listened a lot of Sting. Oh yeah, I liked so much uh, Stuart Copeland. Oh yeah, me too. And uh, he's really my great reference for his musicality and the quality of his music and uh, his group, but uh, his musicality too. Mm. And so I really liked so much and inspired by you, by him. Okay, so really that that's great. But are you saying you started quite late? Yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, because before I uh, was playing uh, piano, and also I think because uh, I don't know, um, my family was not uh, how to say contrary to drums, uh, but uh, at the same they didn't push me. I know if if it's, it's clear. <laughs> Mm. So probably this uh, was um, important for me because I stopped at the beginning my feeling and uh, my intention to play drums. So it was a little bit difficult uh, uh, so I, I started later. Yeah, and so if you... Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Um, no, what I was going to ask is, so if you started uh, uh, later like that, how easy was it is to find other people to practice with, like a bass player? Before you know, uh, before you get the confidence to go professional. Yeah, the first years uh, I didn't play with other bands. So I passed my first two or three years only studying, mm. and then I uh, yeah I find different bands because um, it was okay, and uh, I played for a lot of times rock, pop, and uh, around uh, I think 20 years old, 22 years old. I started to play in the venues and the location was not like a professional. Mm. Sure. Um, I have a strange way, in my past it's not really regular. That's okay, <laughs> everyone has a different yeah. way, as you said, a third way for you. Yeah, yeah. because at the beginning I was not a professional. I, I began a professionist, uh, I think, uh, 13 years old. Mm -hmm. Uh, because uh, and probably it was with jazz when mm -hmm. I turned in jazz playing jazz uh, I began a professionist in music and because before I worked a lot uh, in another field I'm so proud about it eh? yeah uh, because I worked a lot in international cooperation for um, developing countries in educational for peace uh, intercultural sector and uh, I traveled a lot around the world. In fact, my first CD, Circle Time, is dedicated 
to my past life. Ah. Uh, it's a book because it's dedicated to all of people I have met around the world in Africa, in the ex Yugoslavia, Kosovo, Chiapas, uh, and my projects there. Mm -hmm. And so it was like a uh, goodbye to my past life. Um, wow. So, really, my different life is really part of me and the same. Wow. And when I finished that work, I began a professional with just. Wow, that, that's, that's incredible. <laughs> oh, very interesting. <laughs> yeah, no, it's nice to hear. It's always interesting to hear um, everyone has a different story. Mm. of how they you know get to where they are so that's really that's really interesting so I mean um, on the drumming side which um, I mean you talked about Stuart Copeland and you started playing jazz at a slightly later stage um, so you know who are the people that you looked up to list to who did you listen to the most what well, as you were starting to develop into playing jazz professionally which artists, and which drummers, and which other jazz musicians did you like to yeah, listen jazz. to? Uh, I like so much the traditional part because in the mm. first uh, time I played jazz, uh, I played a lot of traditional jazz. So I like so much swing uh, and mainstream uh, this part, and uh, I like so much uh, the first drummers, we feel Joe Jones, and so. Um, and Max Roach, Roy Hans, uh, this is my favorite. Mm. But I like so much also piano players. Uh, so at the beginning I listened so much from uh, uh, Bill Evans and Oscar Peterson. These were, these were my favorites. Then in the second part uh, I had a really great passion in modern jazz. But more like really contemporary jazz, so jazz mixed to pop jazz mm -hmm. or uh, ECM. You understand ECM? Oh yeah, style. I know the label very yeah, well. Yeah. Okay. As uh, Benson, you know, this kind of artist in the North Europe. Mm. So I like now this kind of of, of sound and listening for these artists. It was strange because. Uh, uh, I didn't play so much the central part of jazz, uh, hard bop, uh, no, mm -hmm. and bebop. Uh, I didn't play so much. I played the beginning of jazz, mm -hmm. traditional swing, and then the modern jazz. <laughs> so yeah. sometimes I stop to, to reflect about this, but uh, I don't know why. Probably it's because. Um, there is a, a common characteristic uh, that is the musicality. I don't know if uh, yeah, no, 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 makes perfect yeah. sense. and the, the the melody of the compositions. Uh, yeah, because I believe so much that it's important that the <laughs> jazz uh, is um, fit to the public, uh, mm. not only to the experts in jazz. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's sometimes uh, at, at the beginning uh, and now in modern jazz uh, in. Uh, how to say melodic compositions like I don't know, Kate Jarrett, okay? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You can hear the melody, no? Yeah. Uh, also, not experts in jazz can follow this kind of music. No, so no. Not. Yeah, I understand perfectly well. And I agree entirely. For me, melody is very important. And sometimes I think some artists forget this because they want yeah. to show how good their technique is. So yeah. I think that's really important. But because you're a composer, maybe you look at things differently. Probably, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but also, you know, you mentioned a hard bop, but I don't know who plays hard bop anymore. It seems to be of a certain era, and then it came to an end. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure if I think about it. Yeah. Who plays yeah. hard bop anymore? People like Art Blakey came and went. Horace Silver, people like this, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't know. That's an interesting thing you mentioned about the hard bop. Yeah, but probably is because I had not so many uh, possibilities to play. Not many bands in this kind of jazz. Yeah, yeah. So I listened, but I didn't have a lot of opportunities to play. Yeah, yeah. I don't think I've seen anyone play hard bop in recent times live in London either. So yeah, maybe that's maybe that one. The the. As you say, the traditional stroke mainstream, maybe that's um, lasted longer. It's easier to, to keep going. 
Actually, talking about piano players, uh, last night I interviewed um, Bob James. I don't know if you remember that name. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, he's one of the very best. So he's brought out a new CD, and it's um, he's done a lot of amazing things over the years, but he's kind of gone back to a traditional uh, trio format. Because, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, so it's interesting that, you know, he's done that as well, and it's got a bit of soul, but... Yeah, the hard bop, that, that's fascinating. Okay, so, you know, that's really good to hear. So, the other thing I, I, is worth mentioning is you said you started off playing piano. I think there's quite a big connection between drumming and piano because a lot of really good piano players play drums quite well. And there's a lot of drummers who are very good piano players too. Yeah, yeah, I'm completely sure. And um, I need absolutely piano when I play drums. Mm. I don't like, to, for example, to play with guitar. Oh, okay. I miss so much piano, so I have to play with piano because when when there is piano, I play better. I have another feeling. So probably this is for this reason that piano and drums are really connected. Also because piano is a percussive instrument. Yes. So. Thank you. 
So, you know, what the next uh, question I want to ask you is about, well, you know, in Italy, what is the current state of jazz in Italy right now? About jazz generally? Yeah, the jazz scene. Because I hear, I hear interesting reports about what's going on in Italy. Mm. So it's uh, interesting to ask you. <laughs> it's an hard question. It's a complex situation. Uh, the, the, the point is that um, it's not a, a bad moment, but uh, there are not so many opportunities to play if you are not a lot famous a lot. Uh, the right. point is there is a, a low space for emerging emergent artists mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes to festivals and venues they don't care about uh, jazz and music they care only if you are a name because you bring people mm. and so um, uh, we listen uh, uh, the same gigs and uh, the same people so it's a difficult moment because there is not a, a change, a generation change, no? Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and there is another bad situation is that a lot of venues are closing because oh. uh, uh, public don't go to the gigs and uh, the venues are, are, have to close. So it's not a good moment, but uh, there are a lot of good musicians, that's the point. I think in Italy there are really, really, really nice, uh, good jazz musicians and uh, no uh, lot of opportunities to play. And um, about what kind of jazz, uh, I think that uh, we are looking for a new, for a new side of jazz because uh, there is a lot of experimental jazz, mm. or contemporary, and um, a, a, a contrary, there is now a new moment of uh, swing uh, oh. for dancing. Okay, yes. So I'm coming back a lot of uh, big band. Really? Yeah, with dancers. <laughs> so this is this opposite situation because between two sides, the right. swing for dance and the contemporary jazz. Okay, so I mean, um, well, for someone like yourself, does that mean you try to go abroad to get opportunities yeah. to play, or do you play often in, around Europe? Or uh, I'm trying. I played with this CD. I played in uh, Belgium, in uh, some venues, also in uh, Leven Jazz Festival. Then I played uh, in Berlin, in uh, B flat. And I'm trying now. It's quite sure I will go in Sweden. Uh, for festival in March, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm organizing in Chicago. Oh. Uh, I tried also in the UK. <laughs> you want the truth? It's it's I I, I know the truth. <laughs> uh, the point is that when I contacted the New York venues, they were so nice. But they answered me that uh, I couldn't play there because uh, I'm not British, and uh, I don't live in UK. Uh, so to play there, uh, I had to to live in UK. That was so sad for me because I, I had not this remembering of uh, UK. And mm. I know that uh, a lot of Italian musicians really can play there only if they play with British musicians. Mm. So I didn't manage. I want to try again now because if I go in Sweden in March, mm -hmm. I want him to try to fit something in UK. But uh, at this stage, uh, I don't know if it's possible because uh, a lot, lot of uh, answers I, I received uh, was these. So. <laughs> yes, um, I know it's very difficult. I've interviewed some very talented European musicians over the last three years and sadly I keep getting the same yeah. response from every single one. Um, no, it doesn't sound good, does it? <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, you know, we're, we're such a welcoming country, uh, the UK, aren't we, these days? Anyway, yeah, that's... that's <laughs> Well, you know, hopefully, hopefully that, um, that, that can happen. But in the meantime, you sound like you've played some really interesting places. I know the jazz scene in uh, Berlin is quite big. I've, I haven't been there 
myself yet, but I heard it's quite good. Mm-hmm. So you know, you said Chicago, which is really interesting. That's um, is that your the the label that you're on? Is that yeah. based in Chicago? Yeah, yeah, yeah you better tell the listeners what 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 the label is. The name is Blue Jazz. Blue Jazz. Okay. okay. They are in Chicago. Okay. Okay. That's good. So yeah. So hopefully, you know, really, we could uh, get you over to the UK in the future. I mean, that would be really good. Um, but. <laughs> Well, why would I to ask you, who else is on your project? Who are the other musicians? My project with other musicians? Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm, uh, in these days I'm playing with um, an American guitarist, uh, uh, funk, fusion, uh, this kind of jazz. The name is Bill Hart. And uh, they have another, uh, another band with uh, Bossa Nova, you know, mm-hmm. okay, and this kind of sound. Uh, and this, these are fixed, okay? Mm-hmm. And then a uh, different situation they are calling me. Then I have another band of swing. Uh, but one of the um, interesting um, facts that uh, happened to me uh, it's when I began a leader of the band, of my band, mm-hmm. uh, the opportunities of work from other bands uh, were less. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I worked uh, uh, not so much like before my CDs uh, with other band. This is interesting because uh, uh, I shared with other artists and uh, they agreed about this. In Italy this happened because they think that if you are a leader of your band, mm-hmm. uh, you can play with others or you have no time, I don't know. But I'm used to do more things at the same time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's difficult, and I am a woman, so... <laughs> yeah, so I mean, that's um, the other thing I was going to ask you as well, I mean, are there many um, female band leaders in Italy, in, in jazz? Not other types of music, but in jazz? Uh, in jazz, uh, no, we have not so many, so many female uh, jazz musicians, drummers, mm-hmm. uh, leader, and drummer, leader, I think I am the only one, mm-hmm. and uh, we have, uh, I think, another girl uh, jazz drummer, but uh, she's not really a professional, okay. and the other kind of instruments uh, there are, we have, but uh, we have a lot of difficulties. Uh, in fact, uh, I have also, I am also the art director of um, Wind Jazz Festival, with Women in Jazz Festival. It's a oh. festival that uh, I, I have organized for two years okay. to give visibility to leader females in jazz, uh, Italian, uh, because uh, here the opportunities are really not so much. Uh, so I invented this kind of... Uh, oh, uh, also this is a network, uh, it's uh, not only a festival, it's a network between... Uh, ah, UK partners, you know Collage Arts? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, they are in this network and uh, another person from Poland uh, and from uh, Croatia mm-hmm. and from Sweden. And uh, sometimes we organize something together to push females to play jazz or uh, in a political way, or in uh, with discussion, or with festivals, so we know the problem we are trying to work on. Mm, okay, I, I interviewed, uh, I think it was last year, the year before, um, a Brazilian singer and guitar player, um, mm. she's based in Germany now, Zelia Fonseca, and uh, I think she was doing something similar to what you are doing, or, or in Germany they had something similar similar project so that's good so really i mean that so obviously you're trying to do something positive um i think in the uk there's a growing sort of number of female musicians coming through playing different instruments like trumpets and you know just doing different things and there's quite a few drummers in uh, over here female drummers yeah so that's good to hear okay so you know, I think um, just one or two more questions now. So, I was going to ask you about your touring. So, you said you're going to be playing in these places next year. Um, so, what I want to ask you as well is, can you uh, let the listeners know your website? My website so is they could have a look. Uh, in English, 
Okay. So I'll I'll spell Sankieti. So S A N C H H I T A. Sankieti. Yes, but there is also the Facebook uh, official page, mm -hmm. and uh, you find me on YouTube, uh, on uh, Instagram, Twitter, <laughs> whatever yeah. you want. <laughs> exactly. That's important these days. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so really that's um, that's about it for me. I don't think I've got any more interesting questions for you, so I'll let you go away and do the rest of your day. So I just want to say really thanks for this interesting interview with Jasmine on the radio today. I really, I really enjoyed it, and especially hearing about um, yeah, hearing about you know um, how you started and also what you did before. I think that's quite good and it shows other people who might want to get into the music that you don't have to start at the age of five and just play and play. There's yeah. different ways to, to become a professional and to do what you want to do if you like dedicated and work hard enough. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you love music you can do what you want. Mm. Every age is the same and uh, the important thing is that you feel your uh, your mood uh, your passion yeah yeah excellent okay well that's great so thanks for the interview with Jasmine on the radio this morning thank you to you really thank you it's so exciting to be here okay excellent thank you the JLR interview series